Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane, and this week I want to talk about something that's kind of a, almost a bad word in tabletop gaming, and that's digital games. For some, anyway. But before I get to that, I want to address the fact that it's been a lot of fun to watch the Wingspan Facebook forum and see people getting their games and seeing a ton of people play it. And the fact that it has grown to be this giant worldwide phenomenon. I mean, it's it's amazing, right? I mean, it is so popular. Now, I mean, a lot of people are getting into it that haven't been board gamers before. So, you know, they don't know exactly what they're talking about. But like, um, you know, I keep hearing it called bird box. It's everywhere. They keep talking about the bird on the box. And, you know, I mean, it's so popular even that YouTube has had to tell people stop doing these bird box challenges because I don't know, maybe people are playing the game too long, like some of the computer games they do and they they're playing it too long and they get sick and it's and it's awful and people are just dying or something. It's it's amazing what you guys are. Huh? A movie? No, it's not a movie. This is this is the bird box. This one, right? Oh. I guess you can disregard all that. Um, it's a movie. You, Maybe you guys knew. I seem to be the last one to know everything around here. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, speaking on Wingspan, it has been a very successful endeavor anyway for Stonemeyer. Um, there are already, you know, reports of the first run is completely sold out. Some of the, some of the stores are only getting one or two copies. The second and third printing is already underway. Um, it's been a lot of fun to see how many people are, are really into this game and, um, hopefully just continues to grow. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? Um, Wingspan is a great game but it's not perfect. And by that I mean, there's some typos in the game, all right? Um, the the pink between cards have extra E's and there's a couple of birds that are misspelled and, and maybe some text that isn't as clear as it could be and some bonus cards that have um, have a, a range of cards or eggs or, or something that, that doesn't make sense. And so um, when that first came to light, people started coming to Jamie and asking, uh, how is this being fixed? And what are you going to do about this? There was the the belief that just because you buy a first print run and you're part of the pre-orders and part of that initial hype, that you shouldn't have a lesser game than someone who comes in after the fact. And I understand from a, um, you know, from a consumer perspective that you, you don't, like that maybe the or from an early adopter perspective rather that you don't like the fact that maybe you have something that's of perceived lesser quality than someone else um and so there was kind of a period of time where jamie was saying well we'll replace the cards that that produce a mechanical problem in the game the goal card um you know a bird card when the bird cards has an incorrect victory point value we'll replace those and then there was still a little bit of conversation about is it enough? Jamie decided that all these cards that were, you know, misprinted or would have been fixed in future print runs, he's going to go ahead and provide a, uh, a replacement pack. It's, it's going to be still a little ways out now because, you know, it's going to have to come, you know, after the, the second and third printing here, but it is, it is being made. It's going to be available through a number of, of websites. I think it's a, it's a great compromise. I think a lot of people, um, a lot of the people that were originally very vocal about the fact that they weren't happy that their first edition had these errors um, have come around and finally, you know, realized that um, it's a great game and that the errors that pers that are there today um, really don't affect your enjoyment of the game. So while you're waiting for that fix pack or whether or not you even bother to request that fix pack, it is a... It's something that that is out there and available to you. So I think big props to Stonemeyer Games and to Jamie for um, deciding that that was the right thing to do by the by the players and the gamers. Let's talk about Scythe, or more specifically, Scythe 
digital or scythe on steam recently uh, a group of gamers have come together and they started a uh, a Facebook page group for a league that's forming. Um, they are going to go ahead and start doing tournament play and casual play. So if you ever find yourself uh, wanting to play on your computer and you don't have a group of friends that you regularly play with, or maybe you're just better than all your friends and you want a, a challenge, this provides a nice way to you know go ahead and you can enroll in an online tournament uh, at this point it's no prizes as far as i know i think it's just you know bragging rights and having fun and um some of the conversation i've seen in that group it seems like these are a, a friendly bunch of gamers to play with and so you should definitely if you have scythe digital edition or if you have uh the tabletop simulator instance of scythe it's definitely worth checking out which kind of brings me to the main topic that we're talking about and that is digital editions of tabletop board games. Now, anytime you bring up apps and board games, you get a, a clash of the minds. You get the people that say, digital has no place in our hobby. And then you have the other people that are like, no, I'm totally in favor of, of both of those worlds coexisting. Um, you really don't have too many people that are like, I hate cardboard, just give me the board, the digital instance, but I'm sure they're there. I maybe just don't associate with them. Um, no offense. I'm sure they're fine. Uh, but that kind of got me to thinking about, you know, the different ways we can play digital board games. In fact, I posted yesterday on the Wingspan Facebook group and I said, how is it? I think what I actually said was, I love you guys so much. How is it that no one told me that Tabletopia on the iPad actually has Wingspan? So yeah, if you have an iPad or if you want to play Wingspan, you don't have it yet, or you're on the fence, or maybe you just don't want to set it up, you can play on your iPad or your PC. And that got me to thinking that there are a number of ways to play Stonemaier games off the table or to to do a non cardboard instance and you know of course that that brought up the 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 two worlds conflicting that um that i mentioned but i just kind of want to talk a little bit about why digital board games exist if if there's any value in them uh if you are interested and didn't even know that this was a thing um where you can get them and what's available where and just kind of like talking about uh, you know, the different types. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the chase. The, the three big ones, that, at least that I know of, are um, Tabletopia, Tabletop Simulator, and just a full-blown um, app integration. So for example, uh, Scythe Digital Edition. There's some pretty important differences between all of those different things. Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia are what you might call like a physics sandbox. What that means is that it's not smart enough to know whether you're doing something right or wrong. It's basically just here's all the bits, play like you would if you had the actual you know version of the game in front of you. If you are familiar with how to play the game, you play the game how you would normally. If you are not familiar with the game, you could potentially play entirely wrong. You could roll dice and scythe to decide where you're moving in territories. I mean, you could just go crazy with some of the, the things that it would allow you to do. In fact, in Tabletop Simulator, there's literally a button to flip the table. Now, you are probably not going to be terribly popular if you decide to flip a table, but thankfully, unlike in real life, there is an undo button, so you could get frustrated, flip the table, hit undo, and, and maybe you got that out of your system. Maybe that makes for nicer gamers that are... are nicer competitive gamers. I don't know. Um, but that is kind of what that physics sandbox is. There's no, there's nothing in the app or the game telling you how to play the game. It just is. Uh, the second instance is kind of like a full blown AI, like an actual app where the rules are programmed in. So let's say you wanted to move inside, for instance, and you, there's no dice in that, but you went to roll a dice, the, the game would actually either not let you roll the dice or it would, you know, just do nothing because that's not how you how you move. Um, so it actually enforces that rule set, which is really nice if you're not going to watch tutorial videos or if, if you learn kind of hands-on. There's a very low barrier to entry in terms of you don't have to set up a game, you don't have to risk playing the rules wrong, um, any of those things. It just 
is a nice introduction. Some of them have uh, tutorials that are really cool. Um, I find for me personally um, that I really, really like digital board game apps and I, especially for, for games that I don't have. Um, just uh, yesterday I downloaded Isle of Sky for my iPad and I haven't played it yet, but that's one that I've seen, uh, that's a game that I've seen recommended several times which kind of got me to thinking also about a blog post that Jamie wrote, I think it was in June last year, and it was the truth about digital board games was that a blog entry. And it was really fascinating to me because it kind of answered the questions that a lot of people have. A lot of people pop into the Scythe Facebook group and they say, hey, Scythe Digital is doing this thing wrong, or you know, is it actually doing this thing wrong, or my matchmaking is broken, like what is going on? And, and they are presenting the, the question to Stonemaier Games or to Jamie. And it is a, it's a matter of fact that, you know, Stonemaier really just licensed the, the side board game out. So this isn't a Stonemaier product itself. It is, um, in this case, uh, a side digital edition. Uh, the Knights of Unity produced this along with Asmodee, Asmodee Digital. So um, if you had any questions about why Side Digital is be behaving a certain way or misbehaving as the case may be, that would actually be the company you go to. Jamie doesn't actually have any say in how that's done. Um, but one of the questions that he you know, presented as frequently being asked is, why would you do this? Wouldn't you be worried that if people bought the digital version of the game, they're not going to buy the cardboard version of the game? And he mentions that the, the articles that he's read actually point to the opposite, that if you buy the app and you enjoy the app, that you're more likely to buy the, the cardboard version of the game. And from my personal experience, that's certainly true. Um, I'd heard a lot of great things about Splendor. I downloaded the app and have probably played 30, 40, 50 games of Splendor um, just in a short period of time and just loved it. That made me go out and actually purchase the game. I wanted the cardboard version that I could go ahead and you know much more easily play with, with my family versus I think me and my son have actually opened up the app and handed the, the phone or the iPad back and forth and played games that way. But there's something to be said for that physical the physical uh, geez, texture or the, the experience of having actual physical goods in your hand, um, which is, you know, one of the things that people talk about when they talk about, I don't like digital apps because of this, is that's one of the things they mention. It is a tactical experience and I don't, or tactile experience, and I don't have that when I'm playing a digital board game, which is valid. What I also find kind of interesting about the whole, um, does this kind of poach sales from, you know, the, the cardboard version is, um, I have access to Jamie and I can bounce questions off of Jamie. Um, I also know AJ from Van Ryder Games and I know when he was looking to have an app designed for Hostage Negotiator, this was sort of a grand experiment on whether this was going to help sales or hurt sales. Hostage Negotiator has been in the App Store for a little while now. In fact, I, I want to say that it's that it's probably done well enough anyway that they've they've warranted continuing to create the abductor packs that you can buy separate. Since it's been out for a little while, I actually sent an email to AJ and I asked, you know, once upon a time you were kind of hesitant or on the on the fence about whether or not this was a, a good play for the company to produce this digital version of your game. How do you feel that it's gone so far? And AJ indicated that, you know, it is kind of a wash, that he doesn't feel that it necessarily drummed up business for the cardboard version of the game, but at the same time, he doesn't think that it hurt anything. So it kind of coexists in a nice space where maybe there are um, you know, people that have the game that, that love just actually having it in, in front of them. And then maybe there are the people that just really like having board games just on their, their phones. And so kind of, it was kind of just a wash. The next thing I want to talk about is just like, what are kind of the pros and cons? Like the pros and cons of the digital board game that, you know, one of the things that was, that was mentioned in Jamie's blog was that it brings together people that otherwise wouldn't be able to play together. These digital instances of the games kind of enable that too, whether or not you're using Tabletopia or a Tabletop Simulator or an app. And so that's that's definitely one of the big things. I think it also enables um, you know people that are more familiar with the game to teach 
other people that aren't. So for example, um, if you have wingspan in your Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator and somebody wants to know how to play or they've played once or twice and they are kind of unsure if they played it right and they just want somebody to, they wish they had somebody who was more familiar with the game teaching. That's something you can easily pop in and do. So I think overall for me, the pros of digital board games are, are greater than the cons, but I mean, certainly there is, um, I, don't, I don't think we're ever gonna reach a consensus on what is ideally the best way to, to uh, or what is the only acceptable way, I guess, to enjoy our hobby. Let me go ahead and mention just real shortly, um, there are a few digital titles that are, are still, they're in the works that Jamie's mentioned before, either in the, in the live stream or in that actual blog post. They are working on digital copies of Viticulture and Charterstone and, um, oh, I thought there was a, uh, Between Two Castles and Wingspan. So it is nice to see that these games that I enjoy um, are also going to be available on uh in, in a means by which it's, it's very easily to share. Now, if this is the first time you've heard about Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia or Side Digital, let me just kind of run down real quick like what those libraries include. Um, Tabletopia pretty much has every, I mean, I think it actually does have every single Stonemaier game that's out there that's available to you. Uh, Tabletop Simulator has less in terms of official content. Um, they have Scythe and they have, um, let's see here, Viticulture and uh, Euphoria. They also have something called Steam Workshop. This is something that I'm, I'm, I'm unsure how to feel about. I mean, as a consumer, I love it that there's a ton of games out there, whether or not the developer would actually like them being available. I kind of think of Tabletopia as kind of like Apple, iOS. It's a closed infrastructure. You're not making your own stuff, but what is put out there you know, has a certain amount of polish and it is a, you know, it's something that a, a dev team put together. It's, it's well assembled. Um, whereas I think of Tabletop Simulator as kind of like the Android of this solution in that anybody can do it. It's a wide open platform. If you want to, you know, put games out there that are, you know, have never been digital or, or maybe, um, you know, there's some historical instance of a game that people are trying to figure out or if you want to prototype, you know, any of these things, it's very easy to, if you're familiar with the tool set, to just throw all the bits into this physics workshop and, and play it a game. And so like a lot of times, like I mentioned, people will just say, well, I can't find uh, viticulture in this, I'll just go ahead and, you know, download some digital files and put them in there and, and play the game. And, you know, that's, you know, kind of, I guess, up to you whether or not that's something you want to do or, or encourage. Um, for the stuff that's not available, I guess, I technically I don't see the point, uh, the problem, but again, that's not my IP, so who am I to say? Yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of was a more of a, a rambly topic, but it was just kind of something that I, that I, enjoy talking about in terms of like digital board games and and who's for and who's against if there are any digital uh copies of games that are, or ios apps in particular that you really like um drop it in the comments i would love to know what you're playing what you have got the most uh, i guess play time out of i would also like to know are you one of those people that is like i love digital i hate digital um i like you know, where the digital is integrated into the into the physical copy of the game. I would love to hear your experiences, maybe pros and cons for both in the comments. If you have any questions or comments for me, um, leave, them, leave them below. If you like what we're doing here, hit like and subscribe. And if you are still here after all of this, thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.